evening and welcome. Tonight we're doing another language lesson and tonight we're gonna learn Burmese. Let me get my marker. So, Burmese is what is mainly spoken in Myanmar. Um, there are lots of different languages, lots of different dialects, um, but we're just gonna focus on the alphabet tonight because Burmese is one of those languages that um, kind of like English is fairly complicated in terms of spelling and grammar and what have you but when you break it down to the bare bones it's actually pretty simple um, very simple sounds and um, honestly with a lot of practice pretty simple shapes now disclaimer um, I have really terrible handwriting as it is as I say in all my language videos I can't write in a straight line and I can't write things the same size so the Burmese writing is very particular in those aspects um, it's a beautiful language honestly it's I think I said this in another video about Myanmar but um, Burmese is I think one of the most beautiful looking languages in the world the Southeast Asian languages in general are just stunningly beautiful to look at um, and Burmese in particular is very circular and just gorgeous. I really need to get like a compass so I can do it justice. But um, I will do my best. And I know that there's a particular way of writing Burmese. As for every alphabet, there's particular rules on how you're supposed to write. I just know that some languages are stricter than others. Um, I've tried looking it up briefly and I've seen some conflicting things about how Yes, there is a certain way you want to go more clockwise and you want to start from the bottom to the top but then I've seen like some people say that it really doesn't matter like as long as it's legible you know so I think it's like English how there are ways of how you're supposed to write English but once you get good at that it's kind of like a free-for-all like on, for me personally I apparently write F's wrong like lowercase F's I write them like this I guess it's supposed to be like like from the top down, but I write mine from the bottom up. So, um, I think it's, look at all the practice I've been doing. Um, and my pens are rolling everywhere. That might be a good sound. Let me know if you hate it and I'll have better control of my pens. But, um, I'm just going to do my best and know that if you do speak or read Burmese that I'm not... Um, coming from a place of ridicule or spectacle or anything like that. I'm not mocking the language. I'm genuinely a fan of it and I've been practicing and I want to learn more and I'm just a humble, humble beginner. So please be gentle with me. I just think it looks really cool and sounds really neat. So, um, before I get started, um, my cat's trying to sit on my notes. So if I have hop in like, oh, and this and this, it's because the, the things I want to say, I'll, I'll keep forgetting because the cat's trying to sit on the notes. But I do want to say that Burmese is what's called an Abugida language. And I meant to say this in my last video about the Meroitic alphabet because it's also an Abugida. In that, let's say, let's pick some random consonants like L, S, T, R, M. That's, in English, we'd pronounce these as L, S, T, R, M right? But in an abugida, every sound has a vowel attached to it. So in an abugida language, these would typically be pronounced la, sa, ta, ra, ma, like that. So Burmese is also an abugida language. So each consonant has a vowel attached to it. And tonight we're going to start with the consonants because, um, they're actually a little easier to learn the vowels. Usually when I start a new language, I start with the vowels because they're easier, but in Burmese, it's very much the opposite. We're going to start with the consonants. So the first sound is going to be our K sound. So ka, right? So here's the first letter. I'm trying to get around my microphone. <laughs> so this is like a ka sound. Um, but, um, it's a very soft K, so think like the word ask. You don't say ask, you say ask, k, k, k sound. Um, 
So this sound is a non-aspirated sound. Non-aspirated. And um, I'm going to explain this is when I show you the next one because the next sound is the aspirated ka sound. It looks like this. So this is also ka, but it's a hard ka like kite. Um, what else starts with K? Kettle, you know. It's aspirated. So what does this mean? An aspirated sound means that air is coming out of your mouth. So if you put your hand up in front of your mouth and you say the sound, if it's not aspirated, you should not feel air coming out. And if it's aspirated, you should. So this sound is k, k. And this sound is k, k. Try it. Put your hand. I'm going to do it to me. You go k, 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 k. Do you feel the air come out? Try it, try it, try it, try it. I'm serious, try it. K, 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 like that. So there's lots of sounds that have the aspiration and are the non-aspirated version. So this is the first one, so this is the K sound. Moving on to the G sound, or ga. Um, the next two symbols both have the same sound. And before you go like, how is that? We have that in English too. I mean, C and K can have the same sounds, right? Um, that's true for a lot of letters in Burmese. So, this, this is ga sound and very much like the English ga, like gorilla. And also, this one's a little complicated, so give me a second. Like that. This is also a ga sound, um, but it's rarely, rarely used. We're going to talk about that later. There's a few letters in the alphabet that are hardly ever, ever used. It's mostly this one. So, ga sound. It's a little similar to this sound. This, because this is almost like a half G, like a ga, ga, ga. But this is ga, ga, ga sound. And, um, next sound, easy symbol. It's like that. So this is a nga, nga. It looks like this in English. Nga, nga. So in English we have ing sounds, like in the word sing. We say ing, right? Um, so let's take an example from my least favorite TV show of all time. Let's take the phrase bazinga. Bazinga, right? Let's say bazinga. Now let's take the ba off and say zinga. Zinga, zinga. Now let's take the Z off. Inga, inga. Now let's take the I off. Nga, nga. That's what this sound is. Nga, nga, nga sound. So it is the Burmese version of the English ing sound, but it doesn't sound anything like the ing sound. It's nga, nga. And don't let it turn into a Gya sound because, um, you know, English can do that sometimes with G's, make a gya sound. It's not that at all. There's a sound that's very similar to that coming up, so just put a pin in that. This is nga, 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 nga sound. Moving on to the S's, we have non aspirated and aspirated. So this is the non aspirated S. So, sa, sa. Again, I'm going to use the ask because we don't say ask, ask, sa, sa, sa. And again, you should be able to put your hand in front of your mouth and um, no air should come out. So, for the version where air does come out, I'll try to squeeze it in here before it gets cut off. Looks like. Ooh! Terrible circle when I'm trying to get it in frame. <laughs> so this is the aspirated sa sa. And it's like any standard letter or sound that starts with S, like um soup, stop, speed, sa. So sa 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 like that. 
um, get the notes. I forgot to say that, um, Burmese is also a tonal language, which is something we don't quite have in English, um, but, you know, it doesn't exist like it does in this language. There's a lot of languages in Eastern Asia that are tonal, which we're going to get to in a minute, um, put a pin in that, but the, the cat sitting on the notes, so I keep forgetting to look over and tell you little things, but, um, we're going to talk about tones because some sounds, um, are a drawn out tone or called a low tone or a short tone, and it's called a creaky tone. It's really cute. There's also, like, high tone. We'll get to it later, but uh, put a pin in that. Moving on to za sound, or z sound. Yeah, boy, I love the shape. <laughs> Make sure I get it right. Like that. So this is the za, za sound. And then there's this one, which is rare, and I'm pretty sure however I'm writing it is not how you do it. But it goes like, like that. <laughs> so it's also za, but it's very really easy. Yeah, that looks terrible. I apologize if anyone's offended by that. <laughs> um, but it's really used anyway. Moving on to our ooh, to our nya sound. And that. So this is the nya sound. Like this. So if you're like a Neko girl, <laughs> Nya, or as a as a more non-anime reference, like the country, Kenya, Kenya, Nya, Nya sound, Nya. So not Na, Nya, like that. The next four letters. Let me tell you. I'm gonna fix this while I explain. This looks terrible. Um, the next four letters. The first tutorial that I studied completely skipped the next four letters. The next one I saw... There we go. Looks a little better. The next one I saw, um... Just said, don't learn these letters, and then moved on. And so the next one I studied explained what they were, sounded them out, and then said, don't even bother, just moving on. So, um... Three of the four letters are very, so rarely, rarely used in Burmese. I guess they're like old-timey words that you'd only really see in like temples and things like that. And then one letter is just not even used at all anymore. So for the sake of time and space on my board, we're just going to skip them because I've, I've had enough um, Burmese teachers on the internet say, just don't even bother. So we're not even going to bother. Moving on is this really cool letter that I'm probably also writing very wrong, but it looks like this. Uh, there we go. So this is a na sound. There's going to be another na coming up, but this is round. <laughs> na. Looks so cool. Okay, moving on to some aspirated and non-aspirated T sounds. Oh, I wish I could draw a circle. So this is the non-aspirated T sound, so da, da, da. Um, the best example I found is like the word meter. So we don't say meter, we say meter. Da, da, da sound. And then of course the aspirated T sound. <laughs> Looks like that. So this is um, non-aspirated and aspirated. I should make a note up here too. Non-aspirated, aspirated. Ta, ta. So ta, 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 ta. Makes sense, right? Does it make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, we have some da sounds. Um, can I squeeze them over here? Yeah, probably. So we have da and make sure perfect. So yeah, these are both da sounds. This one is just rarely used. This is the more common version of da. We've got another na. This is my favorite letter. <laughs> best one to write. It's the one I write that comes out looking the best. Like that. So this is also na. I think it's so pretty. It's it's 
like the one that actually kind of looks like Burmese really well. Um, sometimes it's spelled like that, but um, it, it's a spelling grammar thing, so we're not going to stress about it too much. It's mostly this one. Moving on to the P's, non-aspirated P is just simply that. So um, let's use the stop or maybe even tempo. I've got some examples. Maybe tempo is the best one because you don't say tempo, tempo. I guess stop too. I think I use that for another one. Stop, because we don't say stop. Stop, pa, pa, pa sound. So tempo, stop, whichever one works for you. And then the aspirated version. <laughs> Sorry, my tummy's a little squeaky today. Pa, pa, like pot, potato, peas, <laughs> pa sound, pa. So. Again, hand in front of your mouth. Non aspirated, pa, pa, and aspirated, pa, pa. Very good. Getting on a little easier, we have this is ma, ma, just like in English, an M sound, ma, ma, ma. Sorry if it's starting to get smaller and smaller. Like I said, I, I can't write things in the same size and, um, and we're gonna run out of space. I have what, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight more letters to show you guys. So I'm worried about running out of space. But anyway, um, and then yeah, yeah sound. Yeah, there's another yeah, which um, is the letter that I struggle to write the most. It goes like that, and then around like that. So this is also a ya, yeah, but it's also used as like an R sound. So I know I say in all my language videos that R is the most complicated letter in any language. And um, R does not exist in Burmese, so it's its own level of complicated. So if there's um, a word that is from another language that uses the word R, they would use this symbol to represent the R sound. And in some parts of Myanmar, this symbol is pronounced Sia. Moving on. <laughs> Sorry for the cuts. There's, there's a toilet flushing. Someone in my house is stomping around. A car just drove by with the most amazing bass I've ever heard. And I could hear it was I could hear it like a mile away. And now my cat just woke up. It's giving himself a bath. So, <sighs> ours are always complicated. Moving on. We have. Isn't that beautiful? This is the la sound. And very simply, we have just a circle by itself is the wa sound. Like I said, it's once you break it down, it's such a simple, simple language. It's just once you get to level two in the language, it gets a little more complicated. So last four letters we have um, this, which is now. In English, we would say tha, right? A th sound is a th sound. And in some parts of Myanmar, they do pronounce this as tha, but generally it's pronounced tha, tha. So to make that sound, stick out your tongue a little bit and put your teeth on top of your tongue and make a th sound. So tha, tha, tha sound. Moving on, still keeping it very simple. We have a ha sound, ha ha, just like English, an H sound, ha. Um, the next one is a rare sound, and it's a little hard to write. <laughs> Looks like that, and I've seen this as la or na. It's kind of unclear, but it's very rarely used anyway, so it's one of those letters that you don't really have to worry about, so. I'm not going to stress over it, but the last letter is this, and it's just an ah sound, ah sound, all on its own. So these are the consonants of Burmese, at least most of them, <laughs> the, excluding the ones I left out. I think that card's coming by with the bass again. Is it? I can't tell. Like it. Can you hear it? Anyway. Usually I film these on Saturday nights and it's a disaster and tonight's a Friday night and it's just as much of a disaster. 
That's what happens when you live in a major city. But, okay, now an airplane's flying overhead. It's just one of those nights, so let's just get through this. Um, so we said we want to practice saying it together. So first one is our g, our non-aspirated k. G, g, g. Then our aspirated k, 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 k. Our g sounds, g, g. Nga, nga, nga. Our non aspirated S, sa, sa, sa. There we go. And our aspirated S, sa, sa, sa. My little examples. Za, za. Nya, nya, nya. Here we go. Na, na. Non aspirated T. Da, da, da. And aspirated T. Ta, ta, ta. Our D sounds. Here goes my pen. Hold on to it. Na, my favorite symbol. Na. Non-aspirated P is pa, pa, pa. And aspirated P, pa, pa, pa. M sound, ma, ma. And Y sound, ya, ya. And the other, ya. Yeah. La, la, my second favorite one. Wa, W sound, wa. Ta, 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 ta. Ha, ha, ha. La or na, doesn't really matter, not a very used word, and ah. All those letters do have names, but um, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to worry about how they sound. Again, it's a level two <laughs> stage of learning the language, is learning what the letter is actually named. All right, moving on to the vowels. There we go. It's as clean as it can get. Look at all the towels I have for to keep it clean. So, I bet you're wondering why all these markers are sitting here. I'm sure this is clean. So, um, vowels are, you want to hear these sounds? That's a great sound. I want to do like a greatest hits of all the favorite sounds, like the elephant ears and all that. So let me know what your favorite sounds are. So I want to, I want to do a greatest hits of the best sounds video. Um, Burmese vowels are the coolest things I've seen in any language that I've studied. It's so clever and so neat and I'm just like I'm in love with this language it's so cool it's just once you get past the easy stuff it's so complicated but it's so cool uh, I love it so vowels are neat in that um like I said it's an abugida every um consonant has a vowel associated with it so the vowels are written around the consonants either in front or behind on top or on bottom or in multiple different places around the consonant so here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna let the blue represent the consonant and i'm just gonna draw like a straight line like that to represent that is a consonant it's just any consonant i'm gonna let the vowels be in green and then the sounds they make in red because that's how cool this language is. Put them in a place where they won't roll around. So, um, let's do two because the first two vowels are the same sound. Just um, kind of like in English, um, depending on what the consonant is and what the word is, you would use that certain vowel. So, this consonant can either be written like this or like this. And it is a soft A, ah uh, sound. Ah, uh, as in father. A soft A, ah uh, sound. I 
again, let me know if that rolling disturbed you. There we go. Um, next sound is where we're going to start to see the tones come in. So this next sound is a creaky tone. Stay. Stay. Nope, it's not going to stay. Okay. The vowel looks like this. And it is an I sound, so E as in C, B, or I always like to use the example of ink because it's one of the few instances in English where the, the I is totally soft like it is in almost every other language, E. So it is creaky. Uh, level two of Burmese is learning these symbols that denote the tones. I don't know if I said this or not. Get the cats on the notes. Um, so one of the symbols is a circle like this, and it means that it's a creaky sound. So naturally, when we say the I with a creaky sound, it's a circle. Um, so a creaky sound is short and cuts off at the end. So this is E, 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 like that. The next vowel is also the E, but it's the, <laughs> put these over there so they won't roll around. It is the low tone. So there's the consonant. Don't fall. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? <laughs> like that. Put this over there so it doesn't fall off the desk. I'm not stopping this video to pick up a pen off the ground. So this is the same E as an in ink, but it's the low tone. So it sounds like E, E. So E, 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 like that. Moving on to U sound, in which we technically have four. <laughs> Go one, two, make sure it's still in frame. Three. Can you see if I write it there? Let's see. Can you see that? Um, no, you won't be able to see that. Darn. Let's move the last two over here. Three, four. Actually, let's give myself a little more space. <laughs> You'll see why. So, the U sound, depending on spelling and what have you, it's either this or this. And this U sound is oo like umami. Which if you don't know what that is, it's like the, the soy sauce flavor. It's like um like a, a Japanese flavor, umami. Or umlaut. It's or like flute. Um yeah, I don't know a lot of examples in English, but um these are creaky tones. So it's ooh, ooh, ooh sound, ooh. So you guessed it. The next two are the same sound, but in the low tone. So it can either look like this or like this. <laughs> Should have given myself more space. Um, anyway, same sound, ooh as in umami but low tone. So, ooh, ooh, ooh sound, ooh sound. So, ooh, 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 ooh sound. A little more simple. O sound, ooh, sorry. O sound, and there's only one of them. And it's really cool. Someone's walking by, I think. It looks like this. So it's above and below. This is rounded. That's really cool. So this is an O sound. It's just like the English O, like go, low, like that, O sound. Moving on um, to a sound that has four different versions. Let's go one, two, three, four. You see all those? Oh yeah, totally. I'm always paranoid, make sure you guys can see everything. So this is, um, I'm going to write out the first two for you. So it looks like this. <laughs> oh, 
That's the first one. Oh, I should have given myself more space. So these two have the same sound. And it is an ah sound, like um, ah, like la, saw, like that ah sound. But this is a low tone, so it's ah, ah, ah. Next one, you guessed it, is gonna be creaky. Should give myself more space to write this. <laughs> There's a circle, so you know it's creaky. It's creaky. So, ah, ah. So, ah, ah, ah. And this one, let me give myself more space to write out that, that letter, that vowel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not that much more. This is going to be in a different tone we haven't heard yet. It's going to be the high tone. <laughs> so this is the high tone of the same letter. So for a high tone, you um, raise your voice a pitch, like raise it a little level, and draw it out like you would for a low tone. So it's ah, ah. Here's the difference. We have ah, 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 ah. So, like I said, we don't really have tones in English. We do to some extent, but not like in other languages where it's extremely important to the language. So, um, even if like these were the same consonants, they'd be completely different words because of the tone that you say them in. So. Moving on to, do I have space over here? Yes, I can fit one more right there. Like this. Because it's just this. That. So this sound is A. Um, kind of like the word vein. Can you still see? Oh yeah, so vein. A. So it's, um, technically it's a hard A sound like we have in English. A. A. Moving right along. I'm going to show you three more vowels. We're going to erase this and I'm going to show you a separate set of vowels. Again, this is why we're doing vowels now and not at the start because as you can see, it's a lot more complicated. So let's go one, two, three. So the first vowel, <laughs> the first vowel. The next vowel I'm going to show you is like this, and this is an A sound, like, um, E, E, I should say, not A, E, this was A, E, as in, um, get, E sound. Um, and then the next version is the same sound, but in the high tone, it looks like this. So eh, but in the high tone. So eh, eh. So eh, eh. Like that. And then this last one I'm going to show you before we go through it again. It's a little complicated. So give me a second to write it out. It works like... Like that. It's so cool. There's some, like, um, spelling where the word, like, totally wraps around the consonant. It's so that's a level two thing. So depending on the word, this can have three different sounds. So this can be e as in get. It can be e like c like that eing sound. Or it can be the a as in vein sound. So it all depends on what this consonant is with this vowel will make a certain sound. I'm going to show you another set of vowels that have a guttural stop to them. And there's quite a few. So I definitely don't have space to write them. So let's go through each one and erase them. So first we have our ah sounds. Ah, e, creaky e, e, e and e. Creaky oohs, ooh, ooh, ooh. And low oohs, ooh, ooh. 
O. The Oz. So we have the low Oz. Ah. 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 Creaky Ah. 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 And the high Ah. 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 So many cars out right now. Oh, this is going to be terrible to edit. But anyway, moving on. A. A. Eh. Eh. Hi, eh. 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 And this one's either eh, e, or a, depending on what the consonant is and the word and the grammar and so on and so forth. Okay, try this off. Moving on to the gut, um, glottal stops. I keep trying to say guttural stops. It's a glottal stop. So a glottal stop, we don't have in English. It's a sound you make with the back of your throat, and you make that sound by clenching your throat closed. So it's almost like, um, imagine you're being choked, and you're making these vowel sounds while you're being choked, basically. So, um, the first one, put all these pens back. There we go. The first one is the same eh as in yet sound. Sorry, my cat's drinking water now. <laughs> it is an... Stay there. Eh as in get. But there, I'm, I would write um, glottal stops, but these are all glottal stops. We're going to close our throat while we make this sound. Eh, eh, eh sound. Again, we don't have glottal stops in English, like, at all. So it does feel weird to say if you've never made that sound before with your throat, but that's what it sounds like. It sounds like eh, eh, eh sound. It's hard to say that quietly. Uh, next glottal stop is going to be an I sound. Looks like this. So this is an I sound. It's not quite the E sound that we had before. Um, it's an I sound, kind of like um, itch, eh sound. But it's a glottal stop, so we say eh, 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 eh sound. Um, next two have the same sound. Let's move them down here. Carefully put that back. Move them down here. Just so I know I have enough room for them. So it's either that or that. So these are both um, A sounds, but it's an A like an apple. So an A sound. Adding the glottal stop, it sounds like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to say it nice and quiet for you guys, but it's really hard. Uh, 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 sound. Next we have O sounds. Make sure, yeah, I can still see. They're all at the end, so I need to make sure that there's space at the end. Looks like this, so I guess this one's not quite at the end, but there's that or that. So these are an O sound, um, but it's like the O in like boat, boat, goat, O sound. But it's a glottal stop, so uh, O. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I can't do it quietly. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's so hard to do quietly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you get what I mean. Let me try again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. You get it. You get it. <laughs> I, I cannot make that sound quietly. We 
have four more. <laughs> Try to make those quietly too. It's really hard to do. I don't. I I did rehearse this video, but I guess I didn't hear myself rehearsing it. So it's a little different. You can hear yourself say. Next sound is going to be kind of like a U sound. Oops, I forgot this part. <laughs> the important part. I was about to say, I already did that letter. Okay, so this is kind of like a... Not quite a U. It, it sounds like the double O in book. So you know how you don't say book? It's book, so it's an uh sound. But with your throat, with the glottal stop, it's uh, uh sound, uh sound. Again, this is impossible to do like an ASMR. I did not think this through. I am not going to go through each one and erase each one quietly. There's no way. Last two. We have... Okay, so this one is the hard A version. So A as in like, what was my example before? I don't remember. I have hey written down. Um, but it's a glottal stop. So a, a, a sound. <laughs> All right. That's it for the glottal stops. It's, it's fun. I love this language. I think it's the coolest thing in the world. I've, I mean, learning languages, I think is really, really cool in and of itself, but I mean, learning a cool language is cool. I mean, all languages are cool, but this one's just really, really cool. Board is so messy. So, since this video has gone on for so long, normally when I do languages, I'll teach you a word or two, but um, it's gone kind of long. My board is all wet from the magic eraser. My cords are falling down. What a disaster video. There we go. So I'll just leave you by saying bye bye. Oh, so many cars still driving by. Teta. Teta. <laughs> bye bye. Teta. Thank you for watching.